Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our Tuesday morning market outlook session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And uh, apologies for the audio issues to start off with. Um, but what we have here on the S&P 500 is a continuation higher here um, <clears throat> up into the right. One of the interesting things is that as of last week, um, we had a pretty significant reversal in terms of sentiment. Um, markets started off much more on a weaker tone at the beginning of the week, uh, start and then quickly reversed higher for the equity market as it closed back to new all-time highs. Uh, we saw that on the S and P 500 this week so far. We're starting off also on a big on on the weaker foot with regards to sentiment. We'll see kind of how that turns around here for the rest of the week. Uh, but you know, looking at the bigger picture here. Um, one of the concerns that we have with the health of this market rally is the fact that we continue to make higher highs in terms of price, but momentum no longer confirms those higher highs. That exhaustion is a concern that we have with the health of the current rally. This is something that has been in place for multiple weeks now, uh, multiple months actually, um, and continues to be a source of concern with regards to how much higher can equity markets continue to go. You see it not only on the S&P 500, but you also see on the NASDAQ 100, higher highs in price, no longer being confirmed by higher highs in momentum. And what's interesting is that the NASDAQ 100, which largely has led this market rally for many, many years, um, over the past few months has actually started to underperform the S&P 500. Um, so the relative performance is no longer there. And if you look at the quote unquote magnificent seven that uh, account for the nearly 50% weight on the NASDAQ 100 index, <clears throat> four out of those seven stocks exhibit this negative divergence that we are referring to higher highs in price, no longer being confirmed by momentum, suggesting that upside <clears throat> could potentially be limited in the primary drivers of uh, <clears throat> this particular index and this particular sector, the specific the tech sector, that have led the markets higher. Now, you could say that uh, the fact that you know markets being dragged higher by a single sector is not healthy, that you need to see rotation, you need to see broadening out of that rally in order to sustain a market rally. And that absolutely is true. And that's sort of what we have seen over the past few weeks which is why we have been fairly supportive of this rally, despite of these concerns and clear signs of exhaustion. Uh, so those are some of the things that we'll continue to monitor and pay attention to as to, is this, uh, is there is there a healthy amount of rotation in this market right now? Is there leadership from other sectors as they're playing catch up? And, and and can technology sort of get back into leadership and perhaps resume this leg, uh, next leg higher? So those are some of the things that we'll take a look at charts here and try to answer those questions. But IWM Russell 2000 made a new higher high, no longer being confirmed by higher highs in momentum. Uh, so uh, small caps, um, you know, relative performance, not too bad. Uh, playing a little bit of catch up here over the last couple of weeks, but certainly not outperforming. Uh, but, you know, we do see some signs of broadening out from small caps uh, to the uh, to the S&P 500. When you look at the equal weight S&P 500 over the past few uh, past few weeks, we also see a slight amount of broadening out of this rally as RSP outpaces SPY showing us that there is broadening out of this particular rally. So those are all healthy signs or, or rather positive signs and we'll continue to see if these things continue to improve that provide us with kind of some of the um, necessary uh, some of the necessary uh, evidence that we need to see to support equity prices continuing to move higher um, another source of broadening out is the fact that we've seen the rotation out of growth names into value names. And that's kind of this chart long term growth has outperformed value, but over the short term, we've seen kind of value play a bit of catch up here over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, past couple of months. Um, so that also is a small positive uh, that we see here for the overall equity markets. 
um, when we look at commodities, uh, commodities did not only break out here uh, a few weeks ago um, to new highs, new relative highs. We've consolidated a little bit after that breakout and is now starting to break out even further. This is obviously on the back of gold and oil breaking out to either new all-time highs or relative highs, um, showing that there's further strength here in commodities. Uh, this is one that we do continue to expect as momentum uh, and trend to remain positive and for there to be further upside in some of these commodities uh, that we track. High yield corporate bonds. Uh, we've talked about the fact that high yield has continued to give us a bit of a risk on signal after what has been a long period of outperformance and has consolidated and now started to break out here. Um, we'll continue to monitor this as to whether this breakout is going to is a true breakout or sort of fails right because there's a few different ways that you can sort of draw these lines um you know you can draw these lines like this where so far the breakout isn't particularly strong in terms of momentum you actually made a lower high here uh, which is not particularly strong which means that there is potential for this to fail and kind of trade right back into the range and that would kind of give us that false um risk on signal and you know when we look across the board from bonds uh, that seems to be kind of the the sentiment from bonds seems to be slipping a little bit um, as we look at bond yields and bond prices looking at vix we also saw a bit of spike here in vix yesterday into the 13 and a half handle um traders sort of demanding a slightly higher uh premium for put protection on the s p 500 going out 30 days 10-year yields uh, back above 4.3% as of yesterday. Uh, this is kind of the big reversal that we've seen here from the bond markets, really pricing in perhaps fewer rate cuts and then the Chairman Powell wants to price in at the moment. TLT is back towards that $92 support. This is a risk that TLT breaks lower here, below 92. Um, this is one to watch. This would certainly be a very clear risk off signal for equities if we do see bonds break below this major support level. Dollar index back at that 105 resistance level here. It's been trading in this range between 102.50 and 105, back in, at the top end of the range. Expectations for now is for this to be range bound, but if we do see this breakout, that also would be a concern here for overall equities as kind of the, the safe haven buying of the US dollar is a concern for uh kind of a, a risk a risk off trade gold continues to get bid up after what has been a breakout to new all-time highs we've consolidated right above that 2150 level and now we're starting to take off here this really has um this is one that's hard to project as to how much higher you can think of this as kind of a range from 1900 to 2150 uh, that's obviously a range of $250 uh, in terms of the height of this move is one way to project how much higher gold can move from that. That would kind of put us around 2400 on gold. That's kind of one crude way to kind of try to provide some kind of upside target. And we're obviously still quite a few, uh, quite a bit of ways from 2400 right now on gold. Oil also breaking out to new high, relative highs. We've talked about the breakout here above uh, 81, uh, we've consolidated above 81, breaking out again. You know, this really puts 90 as our upside target here as for oil. Um, looking at the sectors, one of the sectors that continues to underperform is technology. You know, as it moves sideways, the relative performance of technology relative to the S&P 500 looks poor. Um, it hasn't fallen apart yet but the underperformance here is very apparent and we'll continue to monitor this, monitor this because this very well can continue to start outperforming again um, and if that does happen you know that will provide in my opinion a new boost to the equity markets uh, but so far kind of the primary leader of equity prices um technology has not been there consumer discretionary is also another concern the fact that uh consumer discretionary for many months have really largely have gone absolutely nowhere and if you can see because of that the relative performance of the s p 500 is incredibly poor 
technology and discretionary are the two sectors that have dragged this market higher for the past few years. And so far, they're nowhere to be seen in terms of performance. Like I said, these two can very easily roar back into leadership. And that's predominantly what we're keeping an eye out on. In the meantime, you have uh, sectors like um, uh, financials actually continues to outperform. Whoops, continue, uh, financials so far has been incredibly strong on the back of rising interest rates. Um, consumer staples continues to slowly underperform healthcare underperforming materials is one of the surprising outperformers as you can see here uh, materials and industrials both in materials and industrials outperforming uh, giving us kind of strength here this is the rotation that we've seen out of discretionary and stock into materials into industrials um real estate continue to underperform the overall markets and energy oil oil prices you know as we showed as we showed you that breakout here in oil still potentially has quite a bit ways to go so if you look at the major names in the xle complex um whether that's conical phillips exxon mobile some of the oil and gas equipment providers like schlumberger and halliburton those are some of the best position energy stocks at the moment, despite the fact that they are in the short run overbought. Um, this is definitely one of the sectors that looks um, like the upside is still, there's still plenty of room to run potentially for energy stocks, uh, despite in the short run looking fairly stretched. Um, home builders continues to outperform the S&P 500 on the back of the fact that Housing demand remains fairly resilient and inventory remains incredibly low. Uh, semiconductors, uh, after a period of sort of underperformance, is starting to show a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, ready for this trend to sort of continue again. Um, you know, it's been very much on a upwards to the right trajectory. But over the past, uh, I would say nearly one month, as you can see, the semiconductor index has really gone nowhere but sideways. Uh, so we're kind of keep, keeping a close eye this particular week to see if semiconductors kind of resumes that bullish trend. And if it does, uh, certainly worth paying attention to. Um, so with that, uh, a couple of charts that I think are worth paying attention to here for the week. Um, these are specific stocks that are currently moving in the markets. Um, first one is Target. Um, the target, obviously, uh, the target of uh, some some <clears throat> uh, ca political campaigns on the result of kind of the products they they uh, stocked at the end of last year. Stock severely underperformed, uh, uh, kind of bottomed around this 100, 105 area. And on the back of strong earnings, it's kind of outperformed. And we've had two back-to-back -back strong earnings quarters. And now we've kind of broken out above 175 again. So incredibly strong momentum, incredibly strong relative strength, positive momentum, uh, looking for further upside here in the name like Target. Um, another one here is ARM, uh, ARM Holdings, uh, semiconductor stock. Uh, <clears throat> trades have pretty pretty rich valuations just like any other semiconductor stock but after when the stock nearly doubled overnight from seventy dollars to 140 dollars the stock has been consolidating for quite some time um and what we've seen here is the fact that uh, after its consolidation it's trading near the bottom end of that consolidation range so for those of you looking for a semiconductor stock to get back in you know this is one where the fundamentals look quite strong and the technicals, you know, have provided a little bit of a pullback and a relief and a consolidation where the risk reward looks fairly favorable for long exposure in ARM holdings. Um, uh, one on the bear side is Amgen, a healthcare stock. Um, as you can see, uh, a clear bullish trend that is now reversed into bearish trend. And we've seen recently a bit of a rally back to that 50-day moving average. And as of yesterday, started to get rejected. Um, this is a, a potentially bearish trend following uh, idea, basically uh, a bullet bearish trend that has been started. A small counter trend rally provides a better opportunity from a risk to reward ratio to seek some downside exposure. 
um, Palantir uh, starting to underperform. Uh, obviously, heavily overvalued te uh, tech name, or rather AI-based name. Um, one of the things, as you can see, is that you can think of this as a uh, sort of a mini head and shoulders pattern, uh, something you can think of this, right? Or even an island top formation. Uh, for those of you that are uh, a technical analyst, uh, this would certainly project down to around that $18 level, potentially as low as 16 to the downside. So from a percentage perspective, that's a pretty significant drop. And one of the things you'll notice here is the relative underperformance. Um, so even though it hasn't broken the support level here uh, on the absolute chart, on the relative chart, it is starting to underperform uh, the S&P 500 and started to break the new relative lows. That's a sign that this could uh, fail at that support level and start breaking down. So my expectation is the break below 22 will be fairly swift and violent as there really are no buyers uh, you know, not a lot of investors in this particular area. Um, so this could tumble fairly quickly back into that 18, potentially as low as $16 area on pound tier. Um, <clears throat> and one last one on the bear side. Raytheon. Uh, you know, what we're looking for here are stocks that are making a new higher high in price no longer being confirmed by momentum and you know where the relative performance is poor and Raytheon certainly at the moment fits that fits that bill. Um, this is really one that you know is probably more of just a short-term pullback here uh, back towards that moving average but so far in the short run looking a little bit overextended um, at risk of a bit of a pullback. So this is a um, a smaller short play uh, in the short run. So those are some ideas to, to pay attention to for today. <coughs> I hope that this is helpful in giving you uh, a start to your week with regards to kind of the bigger picture, some of the risks we currently see here in the market, what uh, primary factors to pay attention to with regards to the health of this market rally, bond prices, you know, uh, really taking a bit of a bearish tone this particular week, worth paying attention to. And then in terms of ideas, hopefully giving you a few ideas to start off your week with that. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great trading day and I'll see you guys here next week.